July 23rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Nehemiah chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament Then there was a great outcry from the people and their wives against their fellow Jews. There were those who said, With our sons and daughters we are many. We must obtain grain in order to eat and stay alive. There were others who said we are putting up our fields, our vineyards, and our houses as collateral in order to obtain grain during the famine. Then there were those who said we have borrowed money to pay our taxes to the king on our fields and our vineyards. And now though we share the same flesh and blood as our fellow countrymen, and our children are just like their children, still we have found it necessary to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have been subjected to slavery while we are powerless to help, since our fields and vineyards now belong to other people. I was very angry when I heard their outcry and these complaints. I considered these things carefully and then registered a complaint with the wealthy and the officials. I said to them, Each one of you is seizing the collateral from your own countrymen. Because of them, I called for a great public assembly. I said to them, To the extent possible, we have bought back our fellow Jews who had been sold to the Gentiles. But now you yourselves want to sell your own countrymen? so that we can then buy them back? They were utterly silent and could find nothing to say. Then I said, The thing that you are doing is wrong. Should you not conduct yourselves in the fear of our God, in order to avoid the reproach of the Gentiles, who are our enemies? Even I and my relatives and my associates are lending them money and grain. But let us abandon this practice of seizing collateral. This very day return to them their fields, their vineyards, their olive trees, and their houses, along with the interest that you are extracting from them on the money, the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil. They replied, We will return these things, and we will no longer demand anything from them. We will do just as you say. Then I called the priest and made the wealthy and the officials swear to do what had been promised. I also shook out my garment, and I said, in this way, may God shake out from his house and his property every person who does not carry out this matter. In this way, may he be shaken out and emptied. All the assembly replied, So be it, and they praised the Lord. Then the people did as they had promised. From the day that I was appointed governor in the land of Judah, that is, from the twentieth year until the thirty-second year of King Artaxerxes, Twelve years in all, neither I nor my relatives ate the food allotted to the governor. But the former governors who preceded me had burdened the people and had taken food and wine from them, in addition to forty shekels of silver. Their associates were also domineering over the people, but I did not behave in this way due to my fear of God. I gave myself to the work on this wall without even purchasing a field. All my associates were gathered there for the work. There were 150 Jews and officials who dined with me routinely, in addition to those who came to us from the nations all around us. Every day one ox, six select sheep, and some birds were prepared for me, and every ten days all kinds of wine in abundance. Despite all this, I did not require the food allotted to the governor, for the work was demanding on this people. Please remember me for good, O oh my God, for all that I have done for this people. When Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and no breach remained in it, even though up to that time I had not positioned doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent word to me, saying, Come on, let's set up a time to meet together at Kepharim in the plain of Ono. Now they intended to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am engaged in an important work, and I am unable to come down. Why should the work come to a halt when I leave it to come down to you? They contacted me four times in this way, and I responded the same way each time. The fifth time that Sam Ballot sent his assistance to me in this way, he had an open letter in his hand. Written in it were the following words. Among the nations it is rumored, and Geshem had substantiated this, that you and the Jews have intentions of revolting, and for this reason you are building the wall. 
Furthermore, according to these rumors, you are going to become their king. You have also established prophets to announce in Jerusalem on your behalf, We have a king in Judah. Now the king is going to hear about these rumors, so come on, let's talk about this. I sent word back to him. We are not engaged in these activities you are describing. All of this is a figment of your imagination. All of them were wanting to scare us, supporting their hands will grow slack from the work and it won't get done. So now strengthen my hands. Then I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deleah, the son of Mehetabel. He was confined to his home. He said, let's set up a time to meet in the house of God within the temple. Let's close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill you. It will surely be at night that they will come to kill you. But I replied, should a man like me run away? Would someone like me flee to the temple in order to save his life? I will not go. I recognize the fact that God had not sent him, for he had spoken the prophecy against me as a hired agent of Tobiah and Sanballat. He had been hired to scare me so that I would do this and thereby sin. They would thus bring reproach on me and I would be discredited. Remember, O oh my God, Tobiah and Sanballat in light of these actions of theirs. Also Noadiah the prophetess and the other prophets who were trying to scare me. So the wall was completed on the 25th day of Elul in just 52 days. When all our enemies heard and all the nations who were around us saw this, they were greatly disheartened. They knew that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. In those days, the aristocrats of Judah repeatedly sent letters to Tobiah, and responses from Tobiah were repeatedly coming to them. For many in Judah had sworn allegiance to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, son of Era. His son Jonathan had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. They were telling me about his good deeds and then taking back to him the things I said. Tobiah, on the other hand, sent letters in order to scare me. God, I find it really interesting that Nehemiah over and over again uses the word remember. Remember me, God. Remember my enemies. Remember what we've done. Remember what they've done. Don't forget. Now, we know it's not like you're ever going to forget. But I think it is a great reminder of that word remember because we should remember you and your faithfulness. You know, reading these stories in the Bible and watching watching them just come to life as, as we work on the, the daily video Bible project. Just been amazing to see your consistency never waver, your faithfulness always there um, with justice commingled with grace and mercy. It is us that should remember who you are in our lives, God. That, yeah, we might be kind of a mess. And we might choose that sin just one more time today over choosing you, God. But you are always faithful to us. You are always there for us. And you always, even when we are acting that way, you always still want what, it, want what is best for us. Your love is consistent. Your forgiveness is consistent. And your faithfulness is always consistent. These are all things that we need to remember and not take for granted on a daily basis. Our prayers should include not to remember us, because you made us, you haven't forgotten us, but asking you to help us have the strength to remember you and your promises, you and your faithfulness, and to thank you every day for those. In your son's name I pray, amen.